Hello my friends. Welcome to Lindy's Magpie Reads and thank you so very much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you subscribers and especially to Pat from the booktube channel Book Chat with Pat. She noticed that I was only a few subscribers away from having a thousand subscribers to my channel and she mobilized her friends, uh, she calls them the Mod Squad, and that put me up to a thousand subscribers. I deeply appreciate it. My main reason for doing this channel, talking about books is to have an outlet for my passion and I am grateful that so many of you are also interested in what I have to say. So today I am going to talk about four literary prizes a little bit and these are four that are maybe lesser well known and I'm also going to talk about four audiobooks that I finished recently. One was a combo of audiobook and print plus a novel that I read in print. Now these five books that I'm going to tell you about are a good indication of how eclectic my reading tastes are. So if you're new to this channel and you want to get an idea about the kind of books that I read, here's an example. One of the, th one of the books I'm going to talk about today is a novel in verse, in translation, with a Swedish indigenous Sami author. I've got a fantasy novella by a queer Vietnamese American author. I've got Nature Writing by a New York Times columnist who grew up in the American South. There's a short story collection by a gay Nigerian author and a novel that spans many centuries. It's set in Western Massachusetts and the author lives in California. All right, so. Before I get to those, the Lambda Literary finalists were just recently announced and I will include a link down below. It is a very long list because there are so many categories, but I'm not going to talk about all of the books. I'll mostly focus on things that I've read and already talked about on this channel. In the lesbian fiction category, there's Big Swiss by Jen Began. Uh, that's the only one that I've read. But Biography of X by Catherine Lacey. Uh, this has been mentioned by a number of different booktubers. And it's also on the Dylan Thomas shortlist. I'm going to talk about that awards list in just a minute. There's Pomegranate by Helen Elaine Lee. And this is already on my list for the Lesbian Plus book club. That's on our roster this year, later on. And just recently, I added Organ Meats by K. Ming Chang to my TBR because I heard about it on Perpetual Pages. And more about Perpetual Pages in a, later on in this video as well. In the gay fiction category, there's Blackouts by Justin Torres, which I loved. In the bisexual nonfiction category, there's Creep by Miriam Gerba. And I just talked about that in my uh, most recent video. It's a collection of uh, memoir essays. And I don't think I even mentioned in that video that Gerba is queer. I often forget to mention that. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just assume if I don't mention that the author's probably queer. <laughs> well, not so much, but still, it happens often enough. For that reason, I am going to read a very short passage from Gerba. And this is about when Ellen DeGeneres was on the cover of Time magazine 
back in the 90s. Gerba says, I tore off the cover and stuck it to my fridge with fruit-shaped magnets. I felt optimistic. I considered coming out to my parents again. The first time I told them I was queer, they answered, no, and we left it at that. Okay, on to more categories. There's transgender nonfiction and Casey Pletz on community is one that I have been meaning to read for a long time. In the lesbian memoir category, there's Hijab Butch Blues by Lamia H, which I read previously. And in the LGBTQ plus comics category, I talked about the fabulous novel in a comics format, Roaming, by the cousins Jillian Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki. April is Poetry Month, so if you are looking for suggestions of queer poetry, the Lammies have got you covered. I have not read any of these. However, the categories, they've got lesbian poetry, they've got gay poetry, bisexual poetry, transgender poetry, and LGBTQ plus poetry. I guess that's for all the rest that doesn't fit into lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. Yes, much to explore there. And I will be talking more about some of these books on the list as I read them. Uh, but in the meantime, I will leave a link down below for you to check it out. So another award that uh, maybe doesn't get advertised so much on BookTube is the Dylan Thomas Award. And the shortlist was recently announced. This is an, an award that is sponsored by the Swansea University in Wales. And it is for works by young writers. So 39 and younger. And I just finished reading Mary Jean Chan's poetry collection, Bright Fear, that is on the short list. And I feel like I need to read it again before I can do it justice talking about it. But my uh, brief review is loved it, recommend it, ah, lesbian poetry at its best. And then there's the Dublin Literary Prize shortlist, which was just announced. The shortlist also has six books on it. In the shortlist, there are two Canadian lesbian authors, which I find very exciting. Uh, Haven by Emma Donoghue and The Sleeping Car Porter by Suzette Meyer. I really, really hope that Suzette Meyer wins this. She also won the uh, Giller Prize two years ago. If you want to see all six titles that are on this uh, short list, just follow the link that I will include down below. Now, speaking of queer books, I am going to be giving a talk in June. It's going to be online. It's called Queering Your Bookshelf. This is through the Strathcona County Public Library in Alberta. And you can sign up for it already. Registration is open. Okay, so on to the books that I have finished recently, starting with the four audiobooks. This first one, Aidnan by Linnea Axelsson. It's uh, translated from Swedish by Saskia Vogel. And I actually talked about this in my Friday Reads on March 1st. I read the print edition. It's a novel in verse that spans a century in the life of two Sami families. Uh, the audiobook is read by Amanda Daw, and I listened to it at normal speed. I didn't increase it at all. She has a really nice kind of 
stately pace that works well for this story that uh, I feel like I got more out of it after, um, you know, by having a second reading of it in a different format. And in particular, I noticed something about how it is that uh, this man who was considered feeble-minded back in the day and was being um, housed in a, uh, um, an institution, how he became a grandfather with descendants. Next up is the fantasy novella Mammoths at the Gates by Ni Vo. Uh, this is fourth in the Singing Hills cycle series. And every one of these novellas is fabulous. I have listened to all of them narrated by Cindy Kay. She does a great job and when you're listening to a series, it is really nice that it's the same uh, reader for the whole series. Each one of these books are actually standalones, and you could start with this one. They're set in a alternate Southeast Asia with um, the fantasy element uh, in particular it's about a group of monks um, and one monk who's non-binary who goes traveling a lot and collects stories and these monks have companions that are a kind of supernatural hoopoo a kind of bird and the supernatural aspect of these birds is that they can communicate with humans and these birds never forget anything. A very useful quality to have when you are recording history. In this particular episode, the cleric comes home to find that his beloved mentor has died. And we hear stories from different people who knew him, including the, his granddaughters who are in the military and who are at the gate with their mammoths wanting his body to take it away for burial. Now what Nevo does so well is storytelling and after I read this I gave it 4.75 stars and the more that I thought about it, I thought, why did I drop a quarter of a star for it? It's, it's five stars. It's, it's great. And it was on the best of 2023 by uh, one of the booktubers that I follow. I've mentioned them already. Perpetual Pages is their channel. Follow this queer, trans, non-binary, Mexican-American booktuber. If you like dark fantasy, a bit of horror, and lots of queer suggestions. Now, earlier books by Nivo have won awards and have been finalists for awards, including the Lammies, and Locus Awards. They've won um, a Hugo and two other lesser known awards that I just want to tell you about. The Ignite Awards, which center the experiences of BIPOC, that's Black, Indigenous, and people of color um, authors who are writing speculative fiction. I will include a link down below if you want to browse um, shortlists and winners from that award and also the International Association for the Fantastical in the Arts. They have a William Crawford Award that's for an outstanding new writer whose first fantasy book was published during the previous calendar year and it's not specifically a first novel award. So the 
IAFA website has the winners of this award from 1985 through to 2017. It's not up to date. So I am going to link the um, Wikipedia page, which goes all the way up to 2024. The award was uh, just announced. It was given to the Saint of Bright Doors by Vajra Chandra Sakara. And that book is currently a finalist for a Lammy Award right now. So I'm definitely going to uh, look into that one. If you've read it already, please let me know what you think of it. All right, now on to the next book, which is nonfiction. And I did this as a audio and text combo. It's The Comfort of Crows, A Backyard Year, and it's by Margaret Wrinkle. And the joy of having this in text is that it is full of collage illustrations by uh, Wrinkle's brother, Billy Wrinkle. And I am going to include some footage in here so that you can see what I'm talking about. It is uh, nature writing set in the author's uh, backyard and nearby woods. Uh, an entry for each week with titles like Pray Song for the Coming Bud Burst. Praise song for the maple trees, first green. The beautiful world beside the broken one, the bobcat next door. Praise song for the red bird who has lost his crest and the skink who has lost his tail. Loving the unloved animals, the spider in my life, and so on. Almost all of these chapters have got an epigraph and so many of the writers that she quotes are authors that I have read and loved like Claire Keegan and Sue Hubble, Country Year, Max Porter, Grief is the Thing with Feathers, Ed Young, An Immense World, now, Wrinkle is somebody like me who likes to have a lot of books to choose from if she leaves home. And so as I read this, I am going to show you what my kitchen table was like at the moment when I was reading this passage. Rain was in the forecast for our weekend away, so I packed 10 or 12 books to give myself options. I like to see books spread out on a table like a banquet. It's the author herself who reads the audiobook, and she grew up in Alabama. Uh, so you've got that uh, Alabama accent in her soft voice. And I found it a joy, a, a total joy to listen to. And next up is another book that works so well in audio. It is a collection of short stories by Arinze Ifeakandu, who is a um, Nigerian writer. And these stories are set in northern Nigeria. They are all about gay men of different ages, from teenage years into uh, probably middle age. The audiobook reader is Myron Willis, and he's got a warm, deep voice. Uh, he's got the, a Nigerian accent. Uh, the characters themselves have got uh, different ethnic backgrounds. Uh, there are Hausa and Yoruba and Igbo and some of them are Christian, some of them are Muslim, but they are all experiencing the oppression of what it's like in Nigeria where affection between two men is uh, illegal. 
actually. In the audio edition, each story is about an hour long, so uh, you have a chance to really get to know the characters, whether they're a man who is grieving the death of his longtime lover and has no rights as far as staying in the house uh, that was owned by his lover and his family. Uh, there's a, a man who left his wife and child to be with another man and what that does to his relationship with his wife and child. Uh, another man whose lover becomes uh, a famous musician and uh, there's a lot of media attention on him and so the kind of pressure that puts on a secret relationship. Actually all of these, the clandestine nature that's forced upon these men because of the society that they live in is heartrending. You you really feel for them and uh, I listened to these stories uh, twice through and my appreciation only grew um, on second listening. So I'm not surprised to be able to tell you that this book won the Dylan Thomas Award in 2023. And I think I already mentioned that Bright Fear by Mary Jean Chan is shortlisted for the Dylan Thomas Award this year. And last up, I think this is my favorite of all of the books, although it's hard to choose. These are all great books that I've been telling you about. But Northwoods by Daniel Mason. This was on many best of 2023 lists and uh, best of 2023 booktuber lists as well, including Angelia of Read and Reread. I'll include a link to her best of video down below. Uh, oh, when I heard about it, I knew, I knew it was my kind of book. And uh, yeah, I was, I was right. This covers centuries in one small place in Western Massachusetts. And uh, Maggie O'Farrell has got a blurb right on the cover calling it polyphony. That's from multiple voices. I love stories that are told from multiple viewpoints. I love stories that uh, have this expanse of time like this one does. I love stories with a really strong sense of place like this one does. So it opens with two young lovers who are running away from a Puritan colony and they set up a little cabin. That part reminded me of The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. Uh, later on, we have an English soldier who decides he wants to grow apples. And there are so many details about um, orcharding and uh, these apples in particular. It reminded me of Helen Humphrey's book about apples. Uh, the Orchard, I think it's called. And then we have uh, the soldier's twin daughters who grow old in that place. We have love letters between uh, a painter who's living in that place and a famous writer who's, I think, in Boston. So this section is uh, epistolary. I'm going to read you a little bit from there. This is in the 19th century. P.S. Ants ate the envelope glue, so I hadn't sealed this yet, and then last night just happened to 
pick up your travels again and open to your description of the twilight as we left the Azores, the sense of oneness with the world, of dissolving away. Now, I wonder if this is what I seek when I paint, a disappearance into, maybe that is what I had come to hate about my grand canvases. Always I was at the center of it. Not literally, no little W.H.T. peering backward over his shoulder, Sensu Cole and his oxbow, but the very act of composition in that specific sense a painter means when he speaks of the act of bringing together various parts into a harmonious whole, this act of cohesion naturally places the subject front and center. Cole is a good example, all meant to be wild nature, but there is no doubt that it is man's eyes we are looking through. This is not to doubt his skill, but he is always there, and my most exquisite moments are ones of dissolution. But what does this mean, anyway? Can there be art without the human in it? Maybe that is what I wish to capture. Beast as seen by beast, tree as by tree. I jest, but not really. And in this book, we have viewpoints uh, that are kind of third person, but still focusing on trees and on uh, the chestnut blight, the, uh, the spores themselves and how they spread. And actually that part really reminded me of one of Barbara Kingsolver's books, uh, Prodigal Summer. And then there's this other section that is the uh, the sex life of the elm bark beetle. It's fabulous. Loved it. Other connections that I made. Oh, it was actually in this same section where the painter is writing. Uh, this is a different P.S. Final observation. A heron in the treetops. Really? Do they perch so high? I'd always imagined them swamp walkers. But there, above, I have my answer. And I have been walking in Beacon Hill Park recently here in Victoria. There are uh, great blue herons that nest there and they are way high up in the trees. I could relate to that. But this section also reminds me a lot of Margaret Wrinkle's uh, Comfort of Crows and her nature writing. Now there are connections between these different parts that often it's only the reader who can see um, objects that connect, a, a hat that was dropped and someone else finds, you know, some years later, or a button that gets lost between the flagstones in the kitchen floor, and we know where that button came from and why, it, why it's there. Uh, yeah, a crystal ball that's found uh, in the earth nearby and uh, the metal ferrule from a painter's uh, paintbrush. That's you know all that's left of the time that the painter was there. There's a Bible that made it all the way up to Canada. We know the history of that Bible. Uh, and you know it's those kinds of little I don't know, Easter egg isn't exactly the word, but uh, small interconnections that are just so uh, rewarding, satisfying, and the story itself is um, a celebration, not only of nature, but of what it means to be human and part of nature. <sighs> Yeah, really, really enjoyed this. So that's all I've got for you today. I do want to mention that March 31st, this Sunday, is the International Day of Trans Visibility. My plan is to only read books by trans authors on this day. I might do a vlog, I'm not sure, or I might just do a summary in my next recent reads, whatever. 
but if you are planning to mark the International Day of Trans Visibility, please let me know in the comments down below. I know there's a uh, there's been a readathon going on this week, so some of you are participating in that uh, a trans visibility readathon. Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you for being there, being out there in booktube land. I really appreciate hearing from you, so please do say hello in the comments down below. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you're interested in picking any of these up, what you've been reading lately, all the good stuff. Enjoy your day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.